Hey, YouTubers and friends, how you doing out there tonight? I myself am uh, warming up after a cold day and doing really good. I'm really excited about this show tonight, along with my friends. So, don't go away. We'll be right back right after this. Deep in the woods, deep in the woods, it was bringing me good. Down, ten inch down, a solid sound. Mule shoe, mule shoe, you're so sweet. I'm gonna take you home with me. I dug it up. That's right, we have Jocelyn Elizabeth, the Relic Recoverist, and the Crazy Lamp Lady. I, I really like that channel. Um, but they're, you know, they're, they were in traffic. We're waiting for them to come on to Skype. So right now... I'm going to bring in my partners in crime, Toledo Jess and Dano, and I'll get them right above us. How you doing tonight, guys? Uh, I'm waiting till they get here. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> so am I. I'm just We're not saying a word till they get here. That's right. <laughs> You're on your own, Ed. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> no, doing good, doing good. Excellent. Warmed Excellent. up a little bit here in, in north northwest Ohio. Oh, yeah. For now, it's supposed to get pretty nippy by Christmas, though. Hmm. Let's see here. Looks like there's a lot of different names in the room here now. Oh, yeah. I, I see a lot of familiar names. So. Yeah, Hook. Yeah. Welcome. Karen's here with us tonight. We yeah. got some new names. Uh, also, Hi, Tina. Uh, we have our friend Adventure Gold, Mr. Andrew Smith from Australia. Hey, yep. Andrew. Yeah, he there is he is. Hey, there's Regnad Man. He's oh, we don't know who he is. He's a bad guy. <laughs> is he? Yeah. yeah. We're, Boot him out. <laughs> he's here during his lunch. And Michael Walker and Gold Hunter and Ray Digga Knapp. With DJ and Ray Knapp. A lot of new faces. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Um, believe me, she'll be here. <laughs> you gotta you believe me. me. You'll, you'll just yeah. have to deal with us for a minute. Why they get situated on their Skype? Uh, uh, evident. We do our our uh, Mark, interviews. Mark, Mark, Mark Ian Mark in Wales. Wales. Yeah. Oh, cool. Where else is everybody from? Especially the new ones. I don't. Well, I haven't we seen have before. Australia, Wales. We probably have. Uh, oh, another from Wales, right or now. Or UK, some other Europeans. Uh, we we are. My software says we're green. YouTube saying we're kind of orange. So if you're 
experience any buffering it will get better yeah uh, that's probably that's without a dark doubt there jared that you're from mars a lot of whales yeah. people here this must have been from when she went over there on her little detector oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah she vacation great right uh bow aqua jigger were over in the uk during a doing a detecting holiday yeah, uh, what's that website? Detectingholidays.com, I believe it is. And thank you everyone for joining us. Um, well, yes, thank you. Uh, well, we are going to end up having a few metal detectors with us in the future, also, guys. And we're going to have Aqua Jigger coming up here. Um, in February, and we have Sam Waters coming up in three weeks, and it should be really good. Working on some other people, too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, Hopefully, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm looking to see if they show up in the room, at least, and, and watch tonight's show. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I have that uh, hook. I have, that happens with me sometimes, too. I just have to refresh it. Yeah, I would like Jared as a guest. Even even Bob. Heck, <laughs> yeah, they're all people to talk with and right. get, oh, yeah. the, get their side of it, what they do. About prospecting and all sure. kinds of stuff. Yeah, look at that. Dustin from uh, the Mississippi he takes bottle dumps. Cool. Always something interesting to find. Okay. So I me, I, it, I, 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 I got a message. Into... Okay, hold on. I got a message from Drew. Um, uh, oh, everybody, Drew will be joining us tonight. Also, uh, Wi-Fi loaded, but Skype is allowing her. Sorry, man. trying to fix. Letting her decide it. You must have a case of blind fingers. <laughs> Did you send Murphy over to him? Apparently, Murphy's in their house as well. Instead of <laughs> just, just dang here. it, man. Our dang buddy it. Murphy. My cousin Murphy. Damn you, Murphy! Here uh, we kind of danced around it tonight, and we still got a touch of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, know. well, we'll get, we'll be asking her those questions when she comes on. And I'm sure it'll be part of what she talks about. So right. hang on to your question and right. listen. We'll definitely let you know. I promise you, when she, they get on Skype, we'll bring them in right away. Because yeah. you've already heard enough from us, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Never enough. <laughs> so so we, we, well, we can even talk about going to Ed's Saturday. Me and me and yeah, just, Patrick I, went to Ed's. And, yes, he did. Oh yeah, and your your Buckeye vocal chocolate, vocalist. Okay, your chocolate and peanut butter Buckeyes were delicious, Jesse. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I haven't had anything that good. <laughs> I, uh, made where, I made where, them. I made them. They're good. Uh, I uh, made them. Where's vocalist from? Uh, I don't know. I don't either. I'm asking him. He hmm. just he just showed me how to pronounce his name. Well, you oh. know how you know how many people don't know what Regnat is. Danger Most, man. Danger it's man. it's danger spelled backwards. Right. Danger, danger. Chicago burbs. Uh, burbs. Sucks. <laughs> Could be worse. Could be worse. I guess. Could it? In Tijuana? Yeah, I guess. Ooh. So, uh, Dano, I was going to ask you, do you get into metal detecting at all yourself? I have a metal detector, but I wouldn't show it to anybody because I'm afraid they'd punch me in the arm or something. 
<laughs> but I do have one, and it does ring off on metal. It's just you're not sure what it is when you're digging it up. There's no clear whether it's silver or... But it beeps. It beeps. And I do That's... go around my yard and stuff, and I take a prospect with me sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I've taken mine quite a few times, but I never pull it out. It's in my car. <laughs> I like to have I a little know. bit better one than I have. I mean, I would. <laughs> Well, I guess the one I have is that, you know, the worst, you know, so. Well, mine was bought from Fingerhut, if that gives you any clue. Cool. They triple its value. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> For five well, easy pavements. Well, right. Like I told you, Dano, I have two metal detectors. I have two carrots. You know, if you want to go beeping and Jesse wanted to go beeping, we could definitely um, I get well, another uh, message from Drew. I entered, yeah, entered Jocelyn's yeah. for hers. Dustin, we're, we're based, we mostly we uh, prospect for gold, but we do have other interests. You know, I collect arrowheads that yeah. I find and I buy and I carry I, uh, rocks home like no tomorrow. Yeah, I got rocks all <laughs> over the place. Um, but yeah, uh, metal detecting is, is we do a little bit but it's not our sure. oh, yeah. main thing. But we do have lots of friends that do it so let's, you know, get some metal detectors in here and uh, talk about that. I mean, we're trying to get you know, treasure hunters on here. We're trying to get the whole scope of, of treasure and prospecting and it's all prospecting, you know, even, even, uh, going flea marketing and, and that is, you know, prospecting in a sense. Well, yeah, but the three of us, we mostly dig for gold the hard way. Yeah. Not, you know, <laughs> not, we don't find class rings and stuff like that. <laughs> no, Glass, pieces of wire, right. lead, lead, sinkers, lots of sinkers. Yeah, lots of sinkers. The occasional lure. Right. Oh, yeah. But we have fun. Oh, yeah. It's a blast. Oh, yeah. Take, and, take home more trash and rocks than I do gold, right. but it sure is a good time. Yep. Yeah. We look for gemstones, too, and all that they, stuff. They said they couldn't find me, and he sent me a picture. I'm talking to Drew on Facebook now, but oh. <laughs> Jocelyn sent me a contact request last night. I accepted it. I'm like, I go, you don't need to find me. Just go to the contacts and make yourself online or away, and I'll pull you into the conversation. So, Hey, Tim's in the house. Hi, Tim. How you doing? when I do that. You hear us all typing away. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it. I'm not typing right now, but I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, everybody, I have to type. I'm talking to Jocelyn and Drew right now. They're in their room, and I'm sure they're aggravated like I was the other week when Murphy showed up. And Murphy lives at your place. <laughs> hey, he has a bedroom right here. Stay in there, Murphy. But, uh, <laughs> back to your room. <laughs> yeah. Get back yeah. in your closet. Right. We also, yeah, we definitely also look for fossils and stuff, too. Oh, yeah. Sure we do. Every time we're out there, we're digging through our rocks. We bring home all yep. kinds of ooh shinies and fossils. Yep. And yep. a lot of trash. Yeah, a lot of trash. Lots of trash. Lots of trash. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of trash. So hopefully everything will work out. Let's just see that on your YouTube live when you was dumping, or the the Facebook live when you dumped all that stuff out Saturday. Oh yeah, I, I uh, gold pair wasn't enough. No, nope. of course it was. It was like a two gallon square faster bucket, you know. And <laughs> I poured it in on the Facebook Live into a gold pan, and now I have glass in my shop. I got cleaned up, but, but as you both know, my shop's a pigsty, 
it's like a hoarder Tina, lives there or something. Tina, Tina Gunnipple wants to know what's the funniest thing we ever found. The funniest thing we ever found. Hmm. How about that crack pipe you found? <laughs> No, that's not funny. Where'd you find that at? <laughs> I don't know. Where did you find that at? At the Pirate Spit? Pirate Scope? No, all that trash I found at Pirate Scope. Yeah, we took it to the Boy Scouts. <laughs> to the <Yeah>. demo. <laughs> it was just a big, huge was... tub of trash. <laughs> <and we're> like, <laughs> This alone is what we pulled out in right. two days at this one particular spot in Indiana. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. we all took a load home at that weekend. Yes, we did. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I can't really think of anything really funny that, that, that I found. Some pretty neat stuff. I did find a trilobite dredging one time. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Apparently, I'm having problems with Jocelyn and stuff. Okay. Unfortunately, here I wish here I could show you guys. I could. Show well, we, you. we believe you. Well, can, can they just call you on the phone line and go that route? Probably. Probably. Um, here, let me tell you here. I want to show the people so they know. Display. There's Jocelyn's I am right there. and She's inviting me to join in Skype. If I come on and come in there, it will hey, Oh, look, we got a wandering buffalo in tonight. My Hi, Shad or Kathleen, whichever one you are. Conversation with my co host. You. Um, would you please call in to, oh, what's the number? Four one nine. It's the Shad Lee. One nine. Oops. <laughs> Hi, Kathleen. No, it's both of them. It's the Shad Lee. No, it says it's both of them. Oh, hi, Shad Lee. Where the beefaloes? Okay, I'm doing what I can, everybody, to get so we can talk to. You're doing fine, buddy. You just you just stay on her. You're doing good. Well, yeah, I, we're the ones that we're the ones that are having to work here. I kind of keep this hair from being to dead. our viewers and our friends <laughs> and our YouTube. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We don't, we don't count, Dano. And our yeah, friends. Dang it, well, man. Of course you guys count. Dang it, man. Of course you guys count. <laughs> Come on. It oh. don't love us no more. See, see, get right back to there. work. I, I'm yeah, get back to, to work. Right there, guys. I, I did a transition that page over so they could see you. So. Yeah, they're having, they're having problems connecting, Rich. Uh, it's on, it's on their end, I think. I'm not sure. That is, that is the call in number to my Skype for the show. Call me. I need you to help her, uh, and you don't show up under E Marvin sixty one. Oh, I bet they do, Dustin. Um, that, that's probably interesting too. 
walking along the banks of the river, Mississippi, finding whatever, whoever, <laughs> whoever. <laughs> uh, just just leave that alone. Keep walking. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Tolliver. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, he says. Even though we are having a little <laughs> difficulty. Murphy shows up, especially when you're live. Ron's trying to help us out. Well, hopefully we'll get him in here in a minute. We're talking about shoes. Whose shoes? I don't know. Ronald and DJ talking about shoes. Oh, hey, about, white, about waiters, I think it was. Yep, oh, there's Thomas. Evening, Thomas. Lucky Ducky. He's the man. Well, for uh, we'll get them in. <laughs> wow, we Unfortunately, we though, it won't show their picture now when they call in. But it will show the phone. That ain't going to work. We need to figure this out. Well, Thomas, we are trying to figure out why they can't get on Skype tonight for some reason. I'd say to hang up and just call us all in, but that might cause total disarray. I, I was actually thinking the same thing. Well, just tell everybody for a moment from our sponsors and then just bleep out. <laughs> Yeah, don't you have a quick commercial to do? <laughs> because of Skype, yeah. You got that right, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tim Grimes said because it's Skype. Is he here. knows. He knows the pain. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. in there. Hey, sorry, everybody. I'm missing you. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right now, I wish I would have donated my hair to Kid, wigs for kids already. That way I wouldn't have any to pull out. <laughs> It'd be all right. You'll get her, brother. You'll get her. Trying to see what you're talking about here. Well, I can show it. No, so, I'm talking about it on our chat room. Ah, right. Okay, okay, okay. Uh-oh, okay, he figured it out. I... I Think Bam. we're good. I think we're good. Now, now I gotta turn off this display. Come on, do it, Murphy. Be good to us tonight. Oh, oh, oh! And there she oh, is. There she is. Look work. Yeah. Ta -da. There we go. <laughs> Finally. I have so much trouble getting on here tonight. It's ridiculous. My oh, goodness. Well, we're glad you did. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Jocelyn. Uh, see, your your fans are going good. He wasn't lying to us. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm a meltdown. I'm like, who said I was lying? I don't lie. No, no, no I, not you. Me. I, <laughs> Oh, you guys really don't have around there. You're just you're just scamming us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was having a meltdown. I'm like, Andrew, we we were bickering a little bit. Yeah, we were we were definitely I'm like, Jocelyn, knock it off and figure it out. Cause it definitely <laughs> <laughs> Get to get to getting it. Well, uh, hello. Uh, <laughs> Jocelyn. That's all that matters. Definitely, definitely. Better <laughs> late than never. Thank you for joining <laughs> us here tonight. It's we're pretty excited about it. I really like. I I I'm gonna say it really up front and right to it. I really <laughs> like your crazy lamp lady channel. Yeah, I got him started on it. it, it yes, thanks to Dan. <laughs> I, I only I, knew about the Relic Recoverist until Dana's like, "Oh, you should see her other channel." Right. <laughs> I, I I binge watched it today. You know, the, the crazy lamp lady. <laughs> That's a crazy I, lamp lady. I love the crazy lamp lady videos, but they're just like 
it's the kind of thing where if it's really nice outside, I'd so much rather be metal detecting. So it's like, right. okay, well, when it gets cold, I'll start doing the metal, the crazy lamp lady videos. And I even told Drew, I'm like, tomorrow we're going to go film a crazy lamp lady video. And he's like, well, so that's what she thinks. <laughs> he's like, it's we're so going detecting. And I'm like, what? So we're kind of like, we're going to figure that out, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, so you can while we were mice a little you too, you know, a little detecting, a little crazy lamp lady antiquing and then detecting yeah. and I can definitely <laughs> see the happy medium. Oh come on, Drew. Yeah. You you're just gonna have to deal with it, buddy. <laughs> he's accepted crazy he's accepted crazy lamp lady because we were at an antique shop a couple weeks ago, and I found this lamp. He w he had wandered away, and I texted him on the phone, and I'm like, Drew, come here right now. I found, like, the lamp. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, you have to come. And I'm sending him pictures of this lamp, and he's like, what are you saying? So he comes around the corner, and I'm holding this lamp, and he's like, how much? I'm like, $120. He's like, $120. How much do you think you can make on that lamp? And I'm like, at least 500 and he's like no and he didn't believe me well you know what i had that lamp listed before we left the antique shop i stopped and i took pictures while we were in the antique shop 15 minutes after we left it sold for 500 dollars on ebay nice. wow nice. <laughs> that's nice when you could flip stuff like that so fast too that. Yeah, that's let, that's pretty yeah, good. Walk mom, out of the walk out of the right. antique shop right to the post office with it. <laughs> Can't beat that. Yeah, seriously. It was like, we had left the antique shop. We went to go get coffee, and we're like getting coffee, and it's like cha ching. That's like the most glorious noise you'll ever hear on eBay. Is cha ching. Now, now, did you did you have a buy it now for five hundred on there? Oh yeah. yeah. I See, I told no, you. I'm coming to find out. The lamp was probably worth like eight hundred dollars. I we sold it for five hundred, but we only paid yeah, one twenty for it. So, yeah. Uh, oh, I man. noticed that lamps go for a lot. I I went to an auction a while back. You go to auctions? No, I've never been to an auction. Uh, Drew's I went to a, a, a auction, a farm auction, and they had pulled all the all the chandeliers, all the lamps out of the house. They must have had two, maybe three. Eight foot tables full of lamps, but I'm watching. I'm watching these people bidding on these lamps, and I'm looking. And I'm going three hundred dollars for that thing, and oh. and yeah, five hundred dollars for that. And I'm watching and I'm listening. I, I started talking to one of the guys. Says, "Oh yeah, uh, depending on who makes them and what you know how old they are, they'll go for thousands if you get the right lamp." Oh yeah. Yeah, especially going, what? now, the really popular lamps are mid-century modern. So the lamp mm. that I picked at the antique shop a couple weeks ago, it was actually made by Royal Hager. And I could tell just by the style and the matching finial that it was Royal Hager. I'd never seen it before in my life. And I, I come across a lot of lamps. Lamps is crazy lamp lady. And I'd never yeah, seen this right. lamp before. <laughs> and I knew, I just knew looking at it, it was something special. And but what lamp was that? It was it was a giraffe lamp. It was actually a giraffe. It was the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> hey, dude, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Ugly sells. Sells for big yeah. money. I have a story about that. Actually, it was funny. Um, here at a local um, thrift shop, I was just wandering around, and I'm in the kids section, and they have all these stuffed animals and crazy stuff, and it, like this row of stuffed animals, and in the middle of it is this like hideous doll. It was the most hideous doll I've ever seen. It was like the straws like hanging out of all the seams and they're all done dead. And I picked it up for two dollars. And I brought it home and I set it on my China cabinet. And it was just like, I gotta get rid of that thing. It's creepy and it's staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> so I listed it on eBay. It was the it was hideous. I listed it on eBay. It was a nineteen twenties happy hooligan doll made by Stife. I don't know if you're familiar with Stife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's who made it. It was actually made by Stife. Um, and it sold for $500 to a buyer in Italy. Even wow. with, like, all straw coming out of his seams, his seams and stuff, it was just, it was amazing. Oh, wow. Ugly, ugly definitely sells. 
<laughs> it does. I, I am. I'm always well, surprised by how ugly something can be and yet sell for big money. You know. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. and then then you got then you you'll see stuff that you go, okay, that's got to be worth a lot of money. You know, like because Tim it's, Cameron it's, says in the room, yeah. "Ugly the new pretty." Yeah, right. <laughs> and some things you think are going to go for a lot of bucks. It's worth a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, and then it's not not worth anything. I must be I, worth a fortune then. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, well, you know, <clears throat> if you get past ugly, then it's something else. So. <laughs> Uh, how long have you been into metal detecting, uh, oh, Jocelyn? Um, well, I got started metal detecting. I'm trying to think. Um, he's making obscene gestures at me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been metal detecting for about three years. Oh, believe it. Cool. About, yep, That's yep. cool. You got yeah. I know I started watching you when you... We're just first starting uh, to get into it, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you were funny to watch. Uh, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, I, see, because you didn't get into our pre-show, you're not you're not going to be aware of what we're going to be asking you, no, or, where gonna be, or where we're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, we all understand how Walmart can be, though. Right. Well, some of the questions we've gotten so far, people want to know where you're from, uh, how long you've been doing this, you okay. know, uh, you know, things like that. They're typical okay. questions. Oh, so cool. remember, yeah. it's, a, it's this is about you. So let's let's hear a little bit about you. Okay. Um, well, I've been stuck in about three years. I'm um, locally. I live right outside Gettysburg, so I have a lot of opportunity for Civil War stuff. But really, my passion is mostly colonial stuff. I love finding those really old sites, um, and there's a lot of those in Carlisle. I guess when I say like I'm near Gettysburg, I'm kind of there's a triangle, and it's like Harrisburg, Carlisle, Gettysburg, and I'm right in the middle. Um, Carlisle has a lot of really great colonial sites. I'm sure Gettysburg does too, but I kind of tend to stray towards Carlisle. Um, what are the other questions? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, just like you know, they some of the questions. You know, what's what's the what's the funniest thing you ever found? What's the craziest oh, thing you ever found? found? You know, what's what's the what's the coolest thing you ever found? What's the scariest thing you ever found? Sorry. Yeah, okay. stuff well, like that. Well, the and, and the scariest thing can kind of like combine. I was okay. in a field um, in New Jersey with my buddy Chuck, and uh, it was like my best day ever. That's even when I called the YouTube video. It's called my best day ever. And we were out in the middle of a field, and I'm just like, you know, detecting along. I get this beep, and I'm like, what the heck? And I'm like clearing away all this stuff. Well, you know what it was? It was uh, a leg bone. It was the leg bone off of a dog or a cat that had like they must have broken it because it was it was like like screws and all this stuff and I picked it up and I oh. regret not bringing it home with me because my my digging buddy John he's really into this like morbid stuff he collects shrunken heads like if if you see him in my videos he's got like like uh, Frankenstein tattooed on his arm he's got like these crazy tattoos <laughs> and I bring it home they found it I'm like. That's just freaky. And I like threw it over my shoulder and didn't bring it home with me. Um, and he's like, I can't believe you didn't bring that back for me. But it, yeah, it was it was somebody who must have had a pet that got maybe hit by a car or somehow broke their leg. And it was just like like this screwed thing. And I'm like, I wish I brought it back with me, but I did not. And that's probably like the freakiest, coolest thing. One of the coolest things I've found. Maybe right. not the coolest. <laughs> but you, you should at it. least get a picture of it. Have your friend get a picture. It was in my video. It was in my video, and that's the thing. He saw it in my video. John saw it, and he's like, "Please tell me you brought that back." And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> "We're in the field. I, I'll go back and look for it for you." <laughs> well, we have so, all we kinds of that. questions in the chat room. Okay, I can't see the chat. So if you send me the right. video, I will gladly answer the questions. <laughs> well, 
Mark EQ asks, what machine did you start on? Okay. Um, well, I started on the Ace 250. I kind of like, I just, when I first started getting into metal detecting, I joined a bunch of metal detecting groups on Facebook and I was like, hey, what's the best metal detector to get started with? And the consensus was an Ace 250. So my first detector was an Ace 250. And then a couple months later, I upgraded to the AT Pro. And then I kind of bounced around a ton. Um, I did um, the Racer, the Force Core, the Deus, the Whites. And then I kind of circled back around and I got back to Garrett. So currently, I am using the Garrett AT Max. Um, but I definitely, I started with the 250. It kind of circled back around. So. That's, what, that's what I have. The Ace 250 and a real a old, machine. Machine. and a real dinosaur one. The Grand, what, Patrick O'Masters is in the house. Patrick, what's my Grandmaster? Grandmaster Hunter 11 or something like that. It's an old <laughs> thing. With an analog dial, and it's no digital at all. It's <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of guys who still hunt with the vintage machines. And it's funny, we'll be knocking on a door, and the homeowner will answer, and he'll be like, well, I have a blah, blah, blah. And we're like, oh, like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got an Ace 350 and a, and a white uh, coin master. Yes, both good machines. Definitely. Yes. Well, that's what I have that I don't use. <laughs> this guy in the chat room says he's got a bounty hunter. I feel for him. That's what I have to. Pat, Pat tell well, Sue that she needs to buy you a machine. <laughs> and it's on her for Christmas. <laughs> now, there's that? a question about Crazy Lamp Lady in here from Scott Lund. Uh, crazy Lamp Lady, how in the heck do you pack and ship those lamps? Oh uh, my do, goodness. do you ever offer free shipping? Do you ever free shipping? Well, it depends on the lamp. Um, some of the lamps are easily shipped. A lot of my bridge lamps, I'll just kind of like roll the shipping into. You know what a bridge lamp is, right? Probably not. Okay, so a bridge lamp <laughs> is, is this really tall lamp, and it has like this arm that goes over. And it's called a bridge lamp because of the arm, but also because it used to hang over the tables when they used to play bridge. Oh, so it's called a bridge like lamp. A, like it, a candle lever. Cool. Yeah, kind of. It's like it's like it's just a floor lamp, but then it's got like an arm that hangs over right. and it hang over the table. Um, they're used a lot now for like reading lamps and stuff like that. Right, okay. right. But the vintage ones are worth anywhere from like eighty to one hundred and fifty dollars, depending on the style. Sometimes they can be up to like three hundred, four hundred dollars. What um, what what do you consider vintage? Vintage is like your for, age, Jesse. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty vintage. I say pre nineteen thirties is a good date for bridge lamps. Okay. So, so um. All right, I got another question here from Tina. Yeah. Oh, wait, do you want me to answer this question about how you ship them? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah okay. To... Um, so I go online and I buy these boxes. They're like 12 by 12 by 50, whatever, and they're really tall. And I just stick the bridge lamp in the box, and they, they ship for like 20 bucks. So if you can get them cheap enough, you ship them for $20. I mean, last year I think I bought four of them for $35, and, you know, every single one is it worth at least $100. So yeah, I made a killing on those lamps. <laughs> Not bad. Most people, you know, they just sell them in antique shops because they think, oh, that's such a hassle to ship. But they're really not that bad to ship. So if you get them, it's, it's totally worth it. And they're good money makers. I've got about eight of them at my house right now. <laughs> so do you find it really hard to sell things? Well, hiring. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I could imagine, I, I didn't see any URL for your eBay store on there, but you do direct your viewers to your eBay store, right? Yes, actually, um, I've kind of been transitioning. Drew and I just opened an Etsy store, so we're kind of experimenting with the whole Etsy thing. 
and I'm going to be offering everything that I pick in the Crazy Lamp Lady, Lady videos on Etsy. And I think what we're going to do is somehow incorporate like a discount code in the videos and on Facebook so that people can get the stuff for a little bit cheaper than I'm asking for it. Because a lot of the times I'll pick something for like 20 bucks and I'll sell it for 250 And I mean, that's reasonable. I, I'll make that money on it. But uh, we're thinking like some sort of discount code for Facebook and for the people that follow me. So eventually we're going to... And, and the name of the shop is actually up on Etsy. It's live right now. It's called Fat Fox Vintage. I, I shared your post on that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's fun. I love foxes. And I, I think fat foxes are especially cute. So I decided <laughs> to call it a Fat Fox Vintage. And he just kind of rolled with it. <laughs> He's like, funny at me right now. Like, <laughs> I, I thought it was a cool name. I like it. I designed my own logo and everything. Again, after the ugly giraffe lamp, I'm not doubting a thing she does. You just, you just, just do what she says and do be the okay, porn. Drew. Do what I say. So, you ready for another question? Yeah, okay, let's go. Okay, Tina, uh, I'm going to chop up her last name. Can I do that Yeah. Uh, wants to know when you're going back to England uh, for more detectives and did you get your coin back that you found with a hole in it? Okay. Um, no, I have not gotten my coin back yet, unfortunately. Um, they actually messaged me and they were talking about maybe donating it to the museum. And um, I'm actually donating a piece of trench art that I found while I was over there to the museum. I was like, you know, I'd really like that coin back in time for Christmas. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get it back in time for no. Christmas. Um, it's like a, a couple month process to like get it logged through the government and all that. Um, I think it. I mean, I think that's a good thing. I they're keeping track of their history, and you know, people are right. going through the correct channels so that they know what what's found where. Um, I will be getting that back in a couple months, hopefully, and I'll be able to wear it around my neck. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that trend chart. That was really cool. It was really cool. I didn't even know what it was. And it's so funny because someone watching my YouTube videos was able to identify that and tell me what it was, which was really neat. Um, so there were, apparently there was a camp right nearby. Well, um, wasn't, World wasn't, War it a, wasn't it a bullet? Or, or It was a bullet. It was a bullet. And actually um, the, the casing had been carved into a cross, which was really cool. Okay. So they're actually going to, I loaned that to the museum, so they're going to keep it on display for a little while um, in cooperation with the camp that was nearby, which is really neat, because they used to hold parties in the backyard of where we were staying and where I found that. Cool. Um, so that's a really neat piece of history. Um, as far as the coin goes, it was just so random. It was a medieval village that had been wiped out by the plague. So <laughs> now it's just a uh -huh. It's just a <laughs> And we got there, and it's funny because the tour guide's like, I've never really found anything in this pasture, but you're welcome to, you know, have at it. And I go around the corner, and the first thing I found is a cow tube. And anyone from the UK knows, I don't know here, I've never found one here, but it, it's like a cow tube for some infection of, you know, the milking bits and all that. <laughs> and they were making up a solid, like, really good signal constantly. And I just took them up all over the place over there. So that was my first signal. My second signal was that coin on that 1553 French coin. And honestly, it was so deep. I thought it was iron because a lot of the times, um, I know your channel's really like into gold panning and prospecting, but a lot of times it's those really deep, good signals, you know, iron when it's deep rings up kind of nice. So you dig it. And I, I, I thought that signal was iron like after I kept getting so deep I was like this is just iron I'm just gonna dig it out and so I'm digging like not very carefully I throw the dirt up <laughs> here's this coin sitting there that's about as big as a little bit bigger than a half dollar and I was like oh my god like you know right away it's silver and it was this 1553 uh French Testin the most gorgeous coin I cannot wait and and at first, when I showed it to the tour guide, he's like, well, it has a hole in it, so it might be considered treasure. Um, and the deal with that is if you find treasure while you're over there, it goes to the British Museum, 
and you have an opportunity to, you know, um, if they declare it treasure and they want to incorporate it into their displays, you have an opportunity to split the profit with the property owner. Um, but the whole process of, you know, uh, you find something, anything older than 50 years needs to be logged. So you find, uh, you know, King George, and it just goes through the process in two to three, three months. But you find something that's declared treasure, and it's two to three years. <laughs> wow. So what? how does the hole make it a treasure as opposed the to a hole, coin? And it's in the top of the coin um, is considered a relic because someone may have worn it on their necklace. Um, like Drew wears his coin on his necklace. Come here. Oh, so like this had a hole in it. You know, someone wore okay. that as jewelry. So that's kind of like it's considered a relic and not necessarily a coin, whereas a coin would just move straight through the process. But a relic is a different story in the British government. So my coin, instead of having the hole at the top, like Drew's has, where it's right at the top and it can be worn in his necklace, mine has a hole straight through the guy's head. So, so they're thinking that's just because they didn't like the guy and not because it was worn as jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it's, it's not treasure i guess because okay. there was just like i hate this guy i'm gonna put a hole through his head so i get it back i get it back in the regular process in time which is two to three months no that's which good is awesome. can't yeah. wait to get it. <laughs> so, so is that, has that been your best find so far it's i i don't know if it's my best find but it definitely my favorite time my favorite because it was such a like amazing surprise Oh, um, like when I went over there, I expected to find something hammered and I expected to find relics or whatnot, but that coin was actually, um, I don't, I don't know what he's doing right now. Uh, <laughs> um, it was 1553. It was an experimental coin. So the French were the first ones to produce milled coins. So, you know, you get your hammered coins and they would like strike them and no two hammered coins are alike. Right. But. As far as the milled coins, this was like one of the ex the French were the first to do the milled coins. So this was an experimental milled coin. It was before they actually started producing milled coins. So it's it's pretty spectacular, and it's absolutely bizarre to find it in the middle of a medieval. You're making faces. He's the coin dealer. He could be the one who's telling you this right now. Well, you know, like, Drew, Drew, you're oh, more than George. welcome to do a shout out for your store if you want. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it's a Fat Fox Vintage on, on Etsy, and I just oh made, for Drew's coin store. I guess. Oh, for his coin store, I just made him the most amazing video for his coin store. Um, uh, it's it's old time numismatics, and it's pretty spectacular. Isn't it? Yeah. It is. He agrees. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's old time O L D E T Y M E numismatics. I was so concerned with spelling. So not doubting her after the ugly giraffe way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever you say, honey. <laughs> <laughs> whatever the boss wants, the boss gets. <laughs> Does Drew have a website for his coin shop? Doesn't yet, but I'm working on that for him because I am the marketing queen. Because I am definitely technologically short bust. <laughs> but I'm taking care of it for him. But right now, all he has is the Facebook page. Um, but I'll be working on setting up a web page. Got another question here for you. Okay. Mark E. What made you decide to set up a YouTube channel? I was going to ask that, too. Well, um, originally, I don't know how, how long people have been following me, but originally I was doing the whole blogging thing. Um, right. I, that's what I, that's how that's how I found you. You were doing that yeah, blog thing. And yeah, I, I thought your writings were really, really good, you know, the way oh, you wrote and everything. Yeah, I, it was, it was, you did magazine articles and stuff. I, and, yeah. I still write for American Digger magazine. So right. kind of what I was doing for the blog is kind of like snowballed into what I do for American Digger magazine, um, just less frequently because I just I don't have time for the blogging anymore. Um, but that's how I originally started. I was I was blogging. Um, right. I started the blog. I did that for about a year, 
And, you know, me and my friends were out one day and we're just like goofing off and stuff. I'd never, I'd never watched a metal detecting YouTube video ever. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was just doing you go, oh, podcast. I can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just doing some fucking things, so I never had any reason to really do, to watch YouTube videos. I mean, I knew they were out there and whatnot. Um, but me and my buddies were out digging, and my, my friend was like, oh, yeah. He's, like, doing all these, like, silly stuff. He's like, we could totally be those digger guys on TV. You should do a YouTube channel. I'm like, oh, okay. I'll make a video of this, but there's no way I'm doing a YouTube channel. And that was <laughs> how it began. <laughs> and then I, <laughs> I started doing these YouTube videos and putting them out. Um, and it was, I've, I've been doing about a year and a half. Um, so wait, like 2015, 16. Yeah. We got lots of subscribers, <laughs> lots and lots of views. It's uh, crazy. How fast it's it's crazy. I'm thinking, what are you, how much are you paying? Oh my God. <laughs> it ain't it's like Facebook. Facebook. You know, I just, like, I try to be myself. I try to be fun and entertaining and, um, it just, you know, I guess people recognize that I'm trying to be genuine in everything that I do. I'm, I'm not acting, well, uh, not, you know. <laughs> at least most people do, huh? No. I don't watch your videos all the way through. I mean, I don't fast forward through none of the videos. <laughs> Some people are just like, rah, 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 rah. yeah. Well, you know, hey, the 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 more they hate you, the more you know you're doing something good. You know. <laughs> yeah, they're just so jealous. Funny, because you know what I've oh well you know what I've always said you know these people who like hate me are haters I've always you know if if they met me and they got to know me I think they might actually like me and it's it's funny because you know I had an opportunity to meet one of my haters a couple months ago and he liked me and then like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I mean like I enjoyed spending time with him and we took a picture and he posted it online and people just lost their minds. They're like, Oh my God, you hate her. What are you doing with her? You know, <laughs> but it's funny. Cause that's how, you know, all these people who hate me have never met me. And right. I honestly believe that if they met me, they might actually like me. So. <laughs> see with me, it's just the opposite. They like me until they see me and meet me. <laughs> then it's like, Oh no. <laughs> Here, here's a question from us to you, and this has happened to me. How often does someone come up to you and say, I know you, you're the relic recoverist, or, oh my God, you're the lamp lady, crazy <laughs> lamp so lady. Funny. That is so funny. It's, it's actually happened to me a couple times, <laughs> and of course I turned bright red because I'm like, <laughs> Who the heck are you? Like, how do you know who I am? I'm just like this little bitty person <laughs> speck on the universe. Um, but a couple, like a couple months ago, I was getting ready to head to Philly actually to see Drew, and I was in the sheets, um, which is like a Wawa. It's like a made-to-order gas station thing, <laughs> and um, I, it was like 4 a.m. and I'm getting ready to hit the road for Philly, and this guy walks in and he kind of looks at me, and I'm like. Like, this, you know, he gave me a funny look. It was enough to make me go, like, why is he looking at me like that? And I went over and ordered my, you know, latte, and I was waiting, and he came over, and he's like, hi, Jocelyn. And I'm like, hi, I'm Jocelyn. <laughs> he's like, I follow you on Facebook and YouTube, and, and, and he metal detects here locally, and I had no idea who this guy was, um, but he follows me. And it was just like, oh, okay, it's great to meet you. And he'd actually detected it a couple places where I'd stopped and asked permission for, which was awesome. Um, well, that was cool. Yeah, and 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 Boiling Springs, Springs Street's like Boiling Springs. Um, you know, we uh, November seventeenth. Was <laughs> was my um one year two my two year anniversary of metal detecting. I. No, three years. Three, three years. No. Yeah, three. Okay. It was my three. It was my three-year anniversary of metal detecting, and we went back to the place where one of the first places I metal detected here locally. Um, it's like a 
a community pool. And uh, we just pulled up and we're gearing up and this car pulls up and the guy like slams, like in the middle of the road, the guy slams in the brakes and, and he like gets out of his car. <laughs> He's like, Jocelyn. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> He's like, I follow you on YouTube. I mean, he was the nicest guy, but it was just, like, so out of place. Like, we're just, like, standing by the road, gearing up. And he knew, he's like, I recognize the hair. Yeah. Of course you recognize the hair. Of course. Um, (laughs) But it was was kind of a cool experience. I mean, it was weird. I still get a little weirded out when people recognize me. Um, But it's, it's like, whoa, you know, watch me. You know, that's, that's, yeah, well, you know, that's what happens when you put yourself out like that, you know, if you're, yeah. you're, you're in front of the camera, you got to yeah, expect so people to come up to you. Care, and it's like easily recognizable, I think, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, uh, it can be a, it can be a problem though. It's, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, I've had issues with that. <laughs> for the most part, they've been good. Like, I've, I've except for your time. your creepy guys hanging out in the cars, all right? <laughs> I've had a couple of creepy interactions when I've been by myself, right? Um, and and you know, it's always that time when I'm like, no, oh, I might as well. There's nobody here to go with me. I'll just go out by myself. And it, it yeah, well, we don't have this problem anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Um, but there, there have been times when I've been out. There's been a couple of incidents where I had to call the police. Um, there's been another where I've had to like call the place of employment of the person who was trying to get me to go back to their hotel room, <laughs> like just stopping and talking to me. But um, uncomfortable situations for sure. <laughs> uh, Dustin yeah. O'Connor has a question, Jocelyn. Okay. Uh, Jocelyn, someone earlier asked if you have plans on doing a uh, collaborative river hunt for Civil War relics and a video with Bo. Yes, absolutely. Um, Bo and I, it's funny because when I was going to England, Steve Moore, um, he's the marketing director at Garrett, he was like, well, let's see who we can send you over there with. <laughs> He's like, why do you go over with Bo? I'm like, I've never met Bo before. I'm like, sure. So, Bo and I went over to England for 10 days straight. We never met each other. You know, it was, it was just like, here, hi, nice to meet you. Let's spend 10 days together. Um, but Bo is just such a genuine, nice guy. He, he is just like, he's amazing. Um, and we really hit it off. Uh, we kind of did some collaborations there when we were in England. And it's funny because I'm always hesitant to, like, incorporate other people into my videos because I don't want to, like, I don't want people to think I'm taking advantage of them. Um, you know, like, uh, well, for Bo, for instance, you know, I don't want him to think I'm using him to get subscribers or, you know, followers or whatever. So I actually wasn't filming him um, for a while while I was over there. And he's like, you can get me on film. I don't, you know, like, you know, like, you know, Oh, we'll get this film and do the whole thing. Um, so Bo has just been such a mental person. He's been really kind. He is as genuine on his videos as he is in person. Uh, and I, you know, we're going to be definitely meeting up for the future. He actually, here at the end of October, it's like 40 degrees. He's like, Jocelyn, come down to Maryland. We'll go in the creek. I'm like, Bo? Not getting me in that creek in 40 degrees. <laughs> like, it's just not happening. <laughs> I think uh, when it starts warming up, we'll definitely there and filming videos. He's got a couple spots where he said to make me. So, um, so I'm last this summer. I think I'm going to be doing a lot more water digging. Hunting? Water hunting? I don't even know if it's digging. It's water. <laughs> like, like, sifting or something. <laughs> We're gonna need a lot more water stuff <laughs> this summer um, with Bo. Maybe with Nugget. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, maybe no. yeah. so, Speak, speaking of Aqua Jigger, we'll be having him on the 13th of February. Maybe we could talk you and Drew into calling in. 
Oh, exactly. Yeah. That's why I put it on the calendar, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, so I'll... are you planning on going back to, to the UK anytime soon? Yeah, we had that I'll... question in the room. Right. This year, I had thought about going back in February. That had been a plan. Um, but I actually canceled my February trip because... The whole trip thing is really hard with two young kids. I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old. So um, it, it's a little rough um, leaving them for a week at a time or whatnot. I think um, January is going to be Las Vegas. February was going to be the UK, but now it's open. March is Texas. We're actually Charles, the Charles, <laughs> Charles Garrett Garrett Memorial. Garrett. Yes. And Drew and I are actually loading the kids in a car. I'm bringing duct tape and tranquilizers. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're loading my children in the car, and we're driving 20 hours to Texas. Um, so hopefully everyone's still talking by the end of that. <laughs> um, so that's March. I'm, and then, you know, I, I have the opportunity to go abroad this year, and I've been thinking about the U.K. I'm, I'm trying to limit it to one trip. It, one international trip a year um to just you know because it's hard to be away from my kids so i'm thinking instead of the uk this year i might do germany they have a lot of um, business in germany and a lot of stuff going on also in italy so i think i'm going to switch it up this year i might skip england and try something different i don't know i guess we'll see <laughs> Well, you know, we have Gold Rush Days, too, here in Ohio. Gold Rush Days is a big Wait, event in Ohio here, and they have detecting it, it also. And actually, Drew and I were just talking about that over dinner, um, about maybe making a trip out there with the kids. I'm going to go out to the car. And go grab yeah, because I think I sent you a message one time on YouTube about Gold Rush Days. We actually had someone. I just didn't speak at the um, Gettysburg. I can't think of any of it off the top of my head. Um the Gettysburg Metal Detecting Group. I just did a talk with them like two weeks ago. And somebody drove up from Ohio. I, I can't remember his name, but he drove five hours. Patrick O'Masters? Probably Patrick O'Masters. It was not, I know. No, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, but, but Patrick, <laughs> Patrick and uh, Susie are very good friends of our and Buckeye I members. I think I met so Grimes. sweet. It was Tim, Tim Grimes. Grimes. Tim okay. Grimes. Drove five hours to come and see me at this talk and talk to me for like 10 minutes and then he got in the car and left and i'm like <laughs> the dude just drove like <laughs> five hours we have to go actually <laughs> speaking of tim grimes he was in for, here for a friend of mine who's also a co-host of prospectors radio rich cooley he contacted you via facebook and okay. he was like, she hasn't got back a hold of me yet, Ed. And I'm like, she's very busy. She's dealing yes. with Garrett. She's dealing with her channel. She has children. She's <laughs> so busy. overwhelmed with how many people contact me on a regular basis. And that's kind of why Drew has stepped in to help me answer <laughs> answer messages and stuff. Just a little bit. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm overwhelmed with how many people reach out to me in a regular basis. So if you're trying to get a hold of me, the best way to do it is to reach out to the Relic Recoverist page and not necessarily my personal page um, because I, I really honestly, I get so many messages I completely suck at that. <laughs> well, but, I, um, I appreciate yeah. Drew getting back a hold of me and you making that group chat and you two coming on. Oh, uh, yeah. This we're is on. Kind of so much fun. <laughs> This is great. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad you're having fun. Uh, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you five. about your... Wait, oh, hold on. I'm like, Andrew. We were definitely uh, fighting for five minutes. <laughs> I don't know why. It's oh, live hi. entertainment for you. <laughs> right. Uh, hold on one second. Hold that thought, everybody. I'm way behind on a couple of short breaks from my sponsors. If you would allow me to take one really quick from our friends at Prospectors Radio, we'll continue right after this. Thank you, everybody.
<laughs> they couldn't see you, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he's probably worse than the kids, huh? Oh, <laughs> he's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Got me crying, he's so ridiculous. <laughs> now, we did have a question for Drew, and I'll ask this why you <laughs> left, uh, from our friend Patrick O'Masters about his tavern. Oh, that's kind of a bad subject. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't like a... Um, he's been having some issues with uh the landlord, and so that whole thing has been put on pause. Um, most likely indefinitely. <laughs> but he's moving on to bigger and better things, like me. <laughs> okay. There so, go. Um, there you go. So, Pat, we won't ask that question. It's a source. Strike thing. it from the list. <laughs> yeah. all right, Strike all right. it from the list. But I, I've got a question for you. Okay. Uh, this, this may be one of the reasons you, uh, you got so many haters so quick. You, you, uh, you come onto the scene and, man, you just, you just burst in there. You're on a box. We're white. You're, you're like <laughs> everywhere. You got. This, good. These people wanting to sponsor you, and you got, you know, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's absolutely mind-boggling. Like, the whole thing has just been, like, an absolute dream. Um, You know, I started with the blog thing. You know, right. when Butch Holcomb from American Digger Magazine contacted me, when I was just doing the blog thing, and he wanted to bring me on as a columnist. I was shaking. I was so excited. I was shaking. I, I just like, I could not believe it. My dream was to like write professionally. And for Butch to reach out to me and give me that opportunity was just amazing. You know, and everything after that <laughs> has just been like, oh my gosh. You know, White's contacted me. Um, I had been swinging the AT Pro. White's contacted me. You know, would you like to be part of the team? And I'm I'm very very close friends with Dominique De Silva, um, Silver Slingers. Um, we're like really close friends. And so when they asked me to be a part of that team, I was like, yes, absolutely yes. Um, so I was part of their team for a while, and I think a lot of the motivation was you know to be with people like Dave Wise, DJ Frankie, you know Ed Kropsky, I you know all the all, everyone. You know, it was it was such a family experience. It was a great it was a great team, um, but I realized that, you know, I started with Garrett Ace Two Fifty. My heart was kind of with Garrett, um, and even though Whites makes great great machines, and it, honestly, me leaving Whites was nothing against the team or any the company or anything like that. You know, I just decided that I needed to go, you know, back to my roots, which was. Garrett and the East 250. Um, so after I left Whites, you know, Steve Moore from Garrett contacted me, and it just was not. It was a great opportunity, so I decided to jump onto the whole Garrett thing. <laughs> so um, Steve sent me the ET Pro or the ET Gold. After I had been talking to um, Tim Saylor, I'm good friends with Tim Saylor as well. So you know, Tim and I were talking back and forth after I, you know, left Whites. And Tim was, I guess he said something to Steve, and Steve contacted me, and, you know, the whole thing kind of went from there. But, uh, you know, I think the best way to get the attention of these manufacturers is to just be genuine. And, right. you know, I, you, I, I feel like a lot of people are trying too hard. If you can just be yourself. And you can just, you know, show your love for history and your love for being an ambassador for the hobby. You can definitely, you know, get the attention of these companies. A lot of people ask me all the time, they're like, well, how do you do this? How did you get the attention of Garrett? How do you get on the field team? Blah, blah, blah. And it's really just about 
you know, building excitement and getting new people involved. And, you know, that's what getting on these manufacturers, you know, I, that's what getting their attention is all about. Right. Um, so I've been really fortunate. I, I've had a lot of opportunities and I'm very thankful for these opportunities. And I hope that there's more opportunities in the future. But I'm very happy where I'm at right now with Garrett, uh, with my team, with uh, Bo and Nugget and the Digger guys, even though they're absolutely crazy. I still love them. <laughs> Are they that crazy for real? I mean, like. No, they're not. They're not that crazy for real. A lot of it um, is for TV. They're just, but they are, they're just as enthusiastic and they're just as upbeat and as funny. They have a great sense of humor. Um, they're really, really great guys. And they get a bad rap because of, you know, the antics they do on TV. But uh, they're really good guys. <laughs> well, hey, they are. It's, it's, <laughs> now, we, it's, we, it's have the a, show. We, we have a question about the Hoover crew. Uh, oh, Oh, she says. <laughs> How good, bad, or ugly was detecting in the snow with the Hoover crew? The snow was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 well, that whole that whole trip started out what, with, um, hey, let's go detecting. Okay, they're supposed to get two inches. Oh, that's nothing. We'll be fine. So we get there, and there's like six inches of snow on the ground. This was like Delaware. They never get snow. <laughs> we get there, and we get out of the car, and there's like six inches of snow. Oh, we got this. You know? And so we're detecting through the snow, and nobody's – I hit that Hibernia. I don't know if you've seen the video. I have it on my YouTube channel. But I got, I got that Hibernia, and I, I should say I'm not entirely sure how I got the Hibernia because there's like this much snow on the ground. <laughs> and it was this deep and I got a signal and I did it and it turned off you know, I stuck it in my pocket I don't know and I was going to do spell between finding it and getting to the car and getting to the lunch I lost it and it, I think it was a combination of my fingers being absolutely frozen um, I think that day it was 8 degrees that was the forecasted temperature, eight degrees. Like, you know, 12, you add 12 inches of snow and you add the wind chill. And it was, I was taking my hands and gloves every five minutes and sticking them in my shirt just to like warm up my fingertips so they didn't fall off. And we were, it was absolute insanity. I don't know what we were thinking. We were thinking, I know what we were thinking. We were thinking two inches, can handle that, you know, but then we get there and it's like six, 10. 12. And by the time we left that day, it was 14 inches of snow. It was absolute insanity. Um, but it was a great, it was a great time. I mean, I, I, for my purpose in metal detecting, I, you know, with my channel and everything I do, I, I really like to push the fact that it's really about the fun that you have along the way. <laughs> and, you know, showing up to a site and expecting two inches of snow and getting 14 inches of snow. I mean, that's an experience right there. <laughs> yeah. Amazing coin that you lose and you have no idea where it was. And by the way, three months later, it showed up in Kurt's truck. He's actually <laughs> found it. so so it wasn't really lost like I thought it was. Um, but I mean, a lot of what metal detecting is is just about the experience. And and I encourage everyone to like get out there and meet other people who are interested in the hobby and go out and enjoy your time together. I mean. Technically, when you had the headphones on and you're going off in this direction and they're going off in that direction, it's really hard to really bond over the whole metal. Well, you, you wind but up bonding I, over a hole, right? Yeah, I, yeah right. Um, but, I mean, I think I, I think it's good for us to all get together and, you know, put aside our differences and, you know, focus on what we all have in common. And that's, you know, our passion for history and for recovering stuff. Um, that's been lost for 200 years. That's really what it's about, and that's what it was about, you know, with the Hoover Boys and and digging out in the middle of a blizzard. It was about <laughs> the experience that the people that you well, spent you know, that's, time that's, with. That's kind of the same feeling we get when we find that you know those little planks of gold that no one's ever seen before. You know, you know. So yeah, I know we know the feeling. I have oh, that. Uh, I have that feeling when I find an arrowhead in the stream. Oh, uh, absolutely! Oh, yeah. 
It was even cool when you found that wagon wheel at that fjord right. at Joe's place. <laughs> yep. I got a wagon wheel in my yard now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the, the term treasure is really relative. I mean, to who, right. you know, you're talking to. I mean, for me, treasure is, you know, the history of it. Or, you know, for you guys, it's finding the, you know, gold. Or, you know, I mean, it, it really, it depends on the person. But we're all looking for our treasure, no matter right. what that is. Well, yeah, so. I'm into I'm into thrifting myself. You know, I do a lot of that. Well, half my house is furnished in thrift store <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I'm I'm furnished in thrift Dude, store stuff. I'm just a lamp. I have like at least thirty five lamps. Yeah, I don't but do I, lamps so. though. Don't take the lamps. So it's like one day it'll be this lamp, and the next day it'll be that lamp. And so it's not really considered a hoard as long as you rotate and you get you get them all is in. That, is that what <laughs> rotate? Uh, I, I, saw I remember that rotating. I, I saw your Christmas gift surprise yes. video or whatever yeah. where, where you we got your brother's gift. Because I'm running out of time. <laughs> the dynamite <laughs> would <bond. laughs> Right. That was a great video. It, that garage looks like mine. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, my wife, calls me a hoarder. Yeah, I get that a lot from my family. <laughs> now we yeah. we have a lot of questions in the room, and I'm missing a lot. I know, and I'm yeah. sure. Well, I'm Patrick, to... yeah, here's one. Patrick O'Masters wants to know if you're going to make it to Fossick, get you a night hunt. That's before Gold Rush days. Yes, that's, that's, that's in June. Gold. It's in yeah. June, isn't it? Uh, that's gold rush. That's days. gold rush days. Yep, that's gold rush days. The other one's uh, a plastic. This. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yep that's. Yep. Cool. See, she's got the papers. Oh, yeah. okay. Papers. Oh, heck yeah. We're active. Papers. Drew is in charge of the papers. I am still on top of this. We're 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 coming to both of them. We're so doing both. Nice. Of them. I don't oh, cool. Pay. Cool. Very family oriented. Cool. Too. If you choose yeah, to bring real kids, love it. very yeah. family oriented. Yeah. Bring the kids. Get along or we can get someone to watch the kids. We will see. <laughs> now, Dustin O'Connor has... I've heard it's very... A... Very what? I've heard it's very... Hey, we're bringing the kids, but we're making Susie watch them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Susie? Patrick, <laughs> did, you, did you tell Susie that, Patrick? <laughs> did you tell Susie that? <laughs> well, a Ava is a wonderful girl. Patrick and... Yes, Patrick's she is. granddaughter. So I, I'm sure they'll be in good hands with Sue. They're going to be with you anyways. Now, now Dustin O'Connor has something about your hair. Um, he's like, Jocelyn, a lot of your fans like the brightly colored dyed hair. If you had the opportunity, would you dye your hair in Mardi Gras colors and ride in the New Orleans Mardi Gras parade? Absolutely. There you go, Dustin. <laughs> and then Mark, Mark E. says, let's talk about that great hair. The great hair. <laughs> They I like your hair. Right now, though, I kind of went the fall route, and so it's like black and purple. <laughs> David, David Vila, David Vila wants to know what keeps you on the ground as bubbly as you are. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, lots of questions for you tonight. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Well, it sounds like they're looking through the chat for another question. Nope. How about going to New Orleans? I would love to go to New Orleans. Um, I've been to Louisiana before. Um, I was in Baton Rouge for a little while. Dustin Connors wants to know if you want to go down to New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've been down there before. I was down there for work a couple of years ago. Um, amazing. Like, food is just like, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I'd say, like, the food was the best part, actually, if I'm being completely honest. I ate a lot while I was down there. <laughs> 
Uh, well, on, on that note, we're, we, we're, we what's on your bucket list? Call. We have oh, a wow. phone call. A phone call? A phone yeah. call. I didn't even oh. put the number out yet. You should put the number out, Ed. Hello, mystery caller. What's your name and who you call? Where are you calling from? <laughs> <laughs> this is Rich Cooley. How you guys doing tonight? Hey, Rich. Hey, Rich. How you doing? Speaking of the devil, Kathleen. <gasps> hey, Rich. If you want to contact Kathleen, the best way is through the Relic Recovery. Kathleen, you mean Jocelyn? Or Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Sorry, Jocelyn. <laughs> Close enough. Trust me, I've been called worse. <laughs> you never get my <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually live close to Joswell. I live in Shippensburg, which isn't very far away at all. No, not at all. Actually, um, that's up by Chambersburg, right? Yeah, I, I, I was actually born and raised in Chambersburg area, okay. and uh, I live in Shippensburg now. So. Okay, all right. Yeah, but, I was actually dragging Drew out to Chambersburg tomorrow to do some antiquing. He just didn't know it yet. Oh, I that's just, cool. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, of course, of course, our our area is very historic. You know, uh, of course, we had the burning of Chambersburg. We had the uh, the battle in there in Shippensburg, and of course, uh, famous Gettysburg and everything. Yeah. And uh, one of my questions basically is uh, for our area: How would you find like where the old homesteads is and doing research and stuff like that. Okay, uh, one of my greatest, well, I have a couple, but my one of my go-to resources for finding old homesteads is definitely ancestortracks.com. Okay. Um, they have maps from the mid-1800s. So you just look up your county, and then you can look mm -hmm. up, and, they, and you can overlay the maps, so you can know exactly... I mean, it takes a little work to overlay the maps. Um, sometimes you can just see landmarks on there that match up, and you can kind of guess where you're at. Oh, okay. Um, so, so it's ancestors. What? Ancestor track. Uh -huh. Track. Okay. And it, it's a okay. pretty old Pennsylvania river, so it probably won't work for anyone else. But it's really good for finding right. old homesteads. Um, another one is Pen Pilot. Now, Pen Pilot doesn't go back as far um i think it's 1940s and it's uh it's like it's uh like plain <coughs> overviews of the areas so right like, right they would survey them uh, that's a good site for finding old home sites and you know historic aerials is a great one and you know i think that's a lot of the one of the ones that everyone goes to um, that's usually late 1800s early 1900s that's a good site one of my Okay. favorites and it actually costs a little bit of money is map Gaia um, it's an app for your phone and you can oh. set it up to historic maps and you can actually overlay uh, present-day GPS over the historic maps so when you're driving oh. around it's like you're following the historic maps but you can see where the old houses are oh okay that'd be cool yeah. It's called um, Gaia Maps or Maps Gaia. I think I think it's Gaia Maps, um, but it's like Gaia twenty maps. bucks. Yeah, Gaia Maps, and uh, you just select the historic maps option, and I think it's like that dates to like the nineteen hundreds. I'm not sure if you can go any later mm -hmm. than that, but it it really helps. How do you spell it? G A I A. Yeah, G A I A, Gaia mm. Maps, and it, it I right, love. Maps. Gaia maps, um, but again, that one's twenty bucks. If you just do ancestor tracks and you kind of figure it out on your own, that's a different story. That's completely free. Um, but Gaia maps cost about twenty bucks, I think, in the app store on either iPhone or Android. So that's a that's a really right. great. That's cool. You you have to come out to Ohio then, because uh, I go out there. I actually drive five to six hours to prospect for gold with yeah. these guys. Yeah. So yeah, it must be worth and, it. Uh, Oh yeah, and when you're out there, uh, well, we'll we're going to have our live radio show there also. Uh, we have it every year for Gold Rush Days uh, for GoldProspectorSpace.com, and we'll be having our live show there, and we can have you on the show. And also, the invite uh, will put you on the dredge because I'm going to have my four inch there, and uh, we'll have some other dredges there, and we'll get you guys some dredge time, find some gold. Oh, definitely, that would be awesome. I would love that. I've always wanted to do um, gold prospecting, um, 
And well, it's I your time. I met whenever I went to Nugget. I went with Nugget Nugget to the um, GPAA <laughs> show in North Carolina, and I met I met a ton of people there. And there was one gentleman, and I don't know his name. I don't think he introduced himself. Um, but I introduced myself to him, and he's he's like, "Where do you live?" And I told him outside Carlisle. And he's like, "That's where I'm from." And he actually ended up giving me a gold pan. And he's like, "You know where the gold is in Pennsylvania, right?" And I'm like, mm, "I don't know." <laughs> he's like, "Oh, I it's in Ohio yeah. County." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, like like I did. I am right on the border of Adams County. Like I actually." <laughs> Actually, there is gold in your backyard, but it's it's deep. Uh, yeah. Right behind the the college, the War College. Mm -hmm. I was back there about two years ago, and I found gold in that creek right behind the gold, uh, right behind the War College. But it's yeah. like a foot and a half deep. Wow, you know, because I. But it's I'm, very I'm, small. I'm in Dillsburg, so right over the border okay. is Adams County, and we have Latimer Township. And I've heard that there's gold in the creeks in Latimer Township. Yes, yes, there is. Latimer Creek, there's gold in there, too. Yeah, that's what I've heard. And, I mean, we have, you know, I, know I take the kids to the swimming hole at Latimer Creek all the time, because it's literally mm -hmm. right a minute down the road, and we've got the creek there at one of my permissions, and that's Latimer Creek. Um, so... I got, I got these gold pans. I might as well go out there and try to use them. <laughs> well, well, we'll have to show you how to use them. That'll right. be cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. I'm excited. I'm really excited for, um, you know, kind of branching out and doing the whole gold prospecting thing. Because I, I, the whole, I started in bottle digging. That's how I started as a teenager was, you know, digging for bottles and stuff and kind of. Oh, okay. It escalated from there. So I've done just about everything, but I have not really tapped into the whole gold prospecting and I would definitely be on board mm -hmm. for that. That sounds like a yeah, lot. I, I got started, I got started in metal detecting about maybe two years ago and I do it very lightly. And I'm, I'm more into prospecting and that, but I have an ACE 250 also. Okay. And when I was out in Ohio, Patrick actually took me under his wing and showed me a little bit of stuff with my metal detector, what it would do. And because I wasn't very familiar with it and, and I did find some stuff there, you know, they hid some stuff and we found a bunch of coins and, uh, actually it was very funny because during that, uh, I'm not sure if the video is still on Facebook or not, but I had my whole radio crew there and they was like gunning me on every time I would find something, they'd be like, Oh, you found something, you found something. And they made a whole big deal out of the whole video thing. It was pretty cool. <laughs> So, okay. all right, I'll, I'll let you guys go. I've not seen that video yet. Thank you so much. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll have to see if Shad can bring that up and post it on the site. Uh, yeah. Because we had like five people there all with flashlights running beside me, and every time my, my metal detector would go off, they were like going crazy and, oh, it was just this, or oh, it was just that, or here we go, here we go, he's going to find it. <laughs> he has so. his own fan club. Follow them down the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. All right, well, I'm going to let you go. It's nice talking to you guys, and uh, hopefully I'll get to meet you all out in Ohio. Yeah, thanks for oh, calling in, Rich. Definitely. That's the plan. Yeah? Okay, well, hopefully we'll have you on the show after a new year, and uh, we can talk about that later. So. <laughs> thanks for calling, Rich. All right, bye-bye. See you, buddy. Bye. Yeah, anybody else wants to talk to Jocelyn, this is the time to call in. Wait, wait, hold on. I right, hate to what? do it what? to y'all again. Again? Let me, let me get in one more little tidbit for one, another one of our sponsors, if you don't mind, okay. Jocelyn. And, yeah. and then if you don't mind, we could open up our phone lines brought to us by uh, Bill Brewer of Carolina Prospectors. I know you met him in north carolina during the gold show when you were there with michael and yeah. uh so let's get this over with so some of my um, some of my obligations are out of the way so we're talking week. and hit the button okay okay be right back everybody okay. thank you <laughs>
They almost got you this time, Drew. There he is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I just can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, buddy. That's all right. <laughs> hey, you gotta have fun, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Life's too short not to. Huh? That's all right. All right. If anyone else feels froggy enough to give us a call, the phone lines are open. And here, uh, allow uh, the delay about 20 seconds. There should be a phone line popping up here momentarily. An uh, Angel <laughs> Angelina Horn wants to know if you've tried peach yet. If I what? Tried peach. I believe it's for maps. Ah. No, I've never tried that before. Peach? Like the yeah. fruit? I guess, yeah. That's how she spelled it. Is that is that a map, Angelina? Or <laughs> it, it, it takes a while for it. Oops, wait a minute. That's alright. She might have answered already and I didn't catch it, no. How about uh, Shane, there's a. Let me. <clears throat> right there where the likes and dislikes are, there's a share button there. Oh, Hit share geez. and you share it there. <laughs> Somebody asked someone asked else share. in the room, how do I share <laughs> those? So. Right. <laughs> I, I guess it depends if he's watching from his TV like like Pat Moore does, Patrick Moore, and if he watches from a cell phone, it's different, well, or an iPad. Or... There's people guessing what, what Angelina's talking about. They're asking if it's a hair color or a drink, oh, peach-flavored energy drink. Yeah. Peach hair? <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone but said something color. about would you color your hair gold and I saw that earlier. <laughs> right. And I, I like the purple. I might try blue, but I'm still on the fence about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I like the black and blue combination. It's pretty cool. I like I like the black and the purple. I'm really liking the black and purple. I have to kind of like recolor the purple, but I like it. I think it's good for winter. Good for winter. Okay. <laughs> Didn't know that. <laughs> it's about like you know the bright tones for summer and dark. Uh, oh, okay. It's a hair thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> I've always, I personally have always thought that was silly, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm I'm old, so You're very old. old school. My dad still is like, I can't believe he did that weird stuff with your hair. So I get it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm a I'm an old old rock punk rocker, so the hair's good, you know. <laughs> every time my every time my granddaughter comes over, it's a different colors. Oh, that's awesome! And, and it's usually two or three different colors, so you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it. digging with DJ says I agree <laughs> that the best. Black and purple, so there you go. The boats are in. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I like. I really do like the pink, though. I'm getting like all these notifications on my Facebook of like one year ago, and it's all this like pink hair, and I'm like, I miss the pink, but I don't know. I like the purple. I think I'm gonna stick with it for a while. Excellent. Go with what you like, right? Yeah. Just like your philosophy. With buying pictures. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go with what you like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hopefully that you don't would... have a case, though, because that would just throw off the whole theory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and it's got to be ugly. <laughs> and yes, ugly is good. Yes, ugly <laughs> sells. <laughs> I see it all the time. <laughs> So you started, you, you said you started off bottle digging when you were young, you were a teenager? Yeah. Um, my, <laughs> I, I remember when you first started, you were you did a couple of your first videos were on bottle collecting, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's I, 
when I was a kid, uh, I was living in Rhode Island, um, East Greenwich, Rhode Island, and and right back behind our house, we you know lived with all these woods, and I would always go back in the woods. Like every single day, I was out in the woods, and I came across this old bottle dump, and I'd be digging old bottles and crocks out of there, and I dragged them all the way back to my house. And um, there was this old dilapidated chicken coop out in the backyard that was with the house when we bought it. And I, my parents had no use for it because they didn't really have chickens. So I just filled it with bottles and crocs and all sorts of good stuff. And I'm sure the new owners were like, look at all this treasure, you know, because <laughs> they were they were really nice specimens. Um, but I was uh, like 10, 11, 12, 13 at the time. Um, so who knows what happened to them, what their fate was. Uh, but I, I was always a digger. I really enjoyed, you know, finding that treasure. I didn't know what the worth was or anything. like. I just thought it was pretty. So I just dragged it home. And from there, I kind of got into picking, which is kind of where the crazy lamp lady thing comes from. And from there, it was metal detecting. So I just kind of made one jump after the next in the form of treasure hunting. Yeah, we kind of all do that ourselves, you know. We yeah. start off, we start off just looking for gold, but then you, you, you find yourself looking at all the rocks and finding pretty rocks, and then yeah. finding arrowheads, and then finding fossils, and you know, yeah. then you're then you're going to like to North Carolina to look for gems, and you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I think I think it, it, there's some crossover in everything that we do as far as right. Yeah, you know. Uh, and like I said, I I consider. Go into the to the uh, flea markets and to the uh, thrift shops is another form of treasure hunting because you know oh, I do definitely. the same thing. I, I look in there. And I hit. I move, me and my wife walk in. She goes to the purses. I go to the furniture. You know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then oh, we definitely. then we met up. Then we meet up at the glassware. So. <laughs> glassware. <laughs> But I also do a lot of uh, well auctions. Uh, auctions are fun. Yeah. But they, they, can be, they can be tricky. You know. My my tricky. concern is that I would get total, totally like just caught up in the bidding. You know, I want that so bad, and then. Oh I, yeah, that's easy to do. I kind of have that personality where, I, like, if I want it, I'm gonna get it, and so I just feel like. That would end badly. Yeah, that's that's uh, that can get you in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you got somebody bidding against you that uh, sees yeah. that you're just gonna <laughs> bid somebody no matter what, you know. Lamp. And knows that giraffe lamp is worth a lot of money. Right. Okay. Well, like I said uh, earlier, we have a question from Scott Lund in the oh. chat room. Jocelyn, my 11 oh. year old daughter Sophie colored her hair because. Of you, Jocelyn. Oh, Could you say hi to hi. Sophie and make her day? Hi, Sophie. <laughs> All right. Right, cool. our, our friend John Shaw is calling from Texas. Hey, John, how you doing? <laughs> Whoops. Hey, John, how you doing, buddy? Uh, doing great. Uh, hey, John. Nice say hello. <laughs> Hello to everybody, and uh, say hello to Jocelyn. Uh, I love her bubbly personality. It makes me want to get out and uh, get my uh, H350 out and go hunting, uh, if the weather would co cooperate a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you have it so bad down there in Texas. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we got an inch and a half of rain today, so well, if yeah, it stops raining, I might get out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, uh, got another caller. Let's bring in another call. Oh. Uh -oh. Stay there. We'll make him wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, caller. Uh, wait one second, please, while John finishes his right. question. Go ahead, uh, John. I, uh, well, I just like I say, I just wanted to uh, tell her hello and. Uh, uh, that I love the bubbly personality. It's great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Y'all um, have a great evening and Merry Christmas. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, John. John is part of our fashion, Flash in Your Pan team. 
likes one of our Patreons. Uh, awesome. thank, thank you very much, John. He's always uh, very supportive of our channel. Thank you. Hey, caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Hook. Hey, hey Hook, how up, you Hook? doing? Yeah, this is Hook from Indiana, Hookmeister Prospecting Outdoors, and uh, uh, Jocelyn being on there. My wife loves metal detecting, by the way, and she has a Garrett uh, AT Pro. But um, what I was calling about, and and I had mentioned, but you already answered several times uh, what your favorite detectors are and stuff. But anyway... Uh, one of my particular properties, which I got a couple of them, it's got some heritage, but one of them has no wagon trail. And you mentioned a site about finding out heritage and stuff, because there was also supposed to be an old trading post because there's a old cable bridge that used to run across the river and stuff. And, uh, I'm. I've messed around with metal detector in the cliffs and I've found some nuggets and stuff, but, um, she's wanting to do more of the relic hunting stuff. So we're kind of wondering what your advice would be to look for in terms of, uh, areas on a property like that to finding relics. Well, normally what I look for is like flat areas, um, whether raised or like off to the side. I usually, you know, flat areas are a great place to start. Also, um, I'm not sure, where did you say you were? Uh, we're in the Indiana right out. Uh, this, the property is just, uh, uh, we'll say west or uh, southwest of I-74, that runs east and west is kind of southwest of I-74 uh, from Greensburg, Indiana. And um, it's uh, definitely on the maps, the old wagon trail is, because uh, there is an old map that come with the property. Uh, but there's just a lot of speculations, different things, but do a lot of gold prospecting in that area too and find a lot of good gold, because that's what I do I'm a gold prospector, but my wife, she's into the metal detecting. That's her thing. And she is definitely a subscriber to you. And, uh, she's wanting some advice from you. Yeah. Um, I would, I would first search for like old home sites. And if you can't find, you know, any online resources or anything of old home sites, look for the flat areas. Um, a lot of times that's where the houses were or whatnot. Um, as far as like a lot of the times what I'll do is Victorian people had this concept of taking in a view and they would go to the highest point in an area and they'd take in a view. So a lot of the times at my properties, I'll go to the highest point. Um, like I have this one place, it's um, Warm Springs Lodge and it was this old inn and up on the hill you know, people would kind of congregate there and they'd hang out there because they'd like to, you know, see the layout of the land and they'd like to be able to take in the view. Um, so I, I found buckles and coins up there. Um, but a lot of the times, you know, sometimes the higher ground is where to look. Um, but, I mean, research really pays off in these circumstances. And I know there's an old road that goes through there um, where there's stores, where there are churches and stuff. Um, houses. The best place to find that is old resources, maybe at your local library online. Um, that's usually my first, you know, I usually go first online to see if I can find any, you know, for me in my area, it's Ancestor Tracks, uh, mid 1800s. But for your area, I'm not sure what the resource would be. Um, but old maps, old maps are just so important to finding old, old sites home sites and whatnot and it, with her metal detector she's going through and you sh i'm sorry you said she had the at pro um she should yes. be able yes. to pick up on a lot of iron and she's getting a lot of iron that's a, you know a key sign 
there was a lot of stabilization there and she should be able to go through the iron and kind of find those signals that are those chirps and that should be good stuff um I mean, that's what I would do if I was to, you know, be along an old road or wagon trail road, um, possible trading post, you know, looking okay, for those well, sites where I think patches. That, that's awesome because another one of our go prospecting properties um, on a different creek um, within this probably 50 mile, well, within 30 miles actually of that creek is also where they used to run an old mill in the uh, 1800s and um, she's want she's got permission to start uh, metal detecting it so we're just she's she's really getting into this and we're trying to figure this stuff out so um a lot of what i look for is uh you know in our area anyway here in pennsylvania the mills were kind of where you know everyone congregated i mean that was the place where they'd hang out to gossip and they you know like there was a lot of people congregating at those old mills so here in pennsylvania i mean that's an ideal place to metal detect is around old mills or whatnot um but i know that from state to state you know those factors kind of vary because you know i go detecting up at my grandparents in new york And here, when I find an old house and I see that stone foundation, it's like prime detecting. It's like, oh, that's an old house. I know there's good stuff there. Um, But you get up into New York and it's these old farmhouses and these people were poor. And you find an old farmhouse and you think, this is a great spot. And you don't find anything because, I mean, the people who are living there were poor and it's a farmhouse. And it's kind of like, you know, depending on state by state, there's different you know, people just act in a different way. But here, you know, old mills are like, okay, you know, this is where I know people were hanging out. There was workers here. There were people hanging out here. And this is a great spot. So if you can get on an old mill spot, it might be worth poking around. And if you're getting iron, that's a good sign. So don't give up when you get a lot of iron because I know a lot of people who give up when they're getting that a lot of iron. Right. I, one well, of my... I, we did- one thing that, Go ahead. We definitely appreciate the info because, uh, but on both of them properties I've mentioned to you, I've found like old belt buckles and so, and this is down in the water. You know, I found old belt buckles. Um, I've found old tail lights to cars and stuff. So you know, um, her detector is waterproof. It's an AT Pro. I mean, she should totally get there in the water. I mean, that's what Bo and Nugget like bank on. Is water yeah. Me, I was She I, got the I, pro I and the gold. Water. <laughs> the gold too. Yeah. The the gold is killer in iron. I mean, um, I'm running the AT Max now, but I'll get on the site and if it's I don't know what it is. I'm like I know my AT golf like the back of my hand. And I'm still kind of trying to jive with my AT Max. Like we I find stuff with it. Um it's a great machine. But with my ET Gold, I get into a site that's really rich in iron. I turn on my iron audio. I turn my discrimination down. And I just go through with my iron audio on. And it's like, and it's like, bing. <laughs> and, and that is a good sound. Um, you right, know, right. You hear, there's a lot of people that just give up when they get in that iron. But it's worth working through and finding those signals that just chime because they're usually something good (laughs) well i definitely definitely like uh hearing your advice and my wife she's like she's ecstatic over it right now so um if you ever come to indiana and if you're on facebook look up hookmeister uh prospecting outdoors uh like i said my wife is a uh um follower so she'll probably message you and your you and your family is more than welcome for a free three day if you come through this area um i'll have her contact you and give you our phone number and you don't want to give her your phone number on here oh yeah i will i've I've done it a hundred times I, I've done it a hundred. I've done it a hundred times. You well, guys, you know that. But the phone, the phone number is one seven six five five six one 
888-6059. My name is Jonathan Perrette, but everybody calls me Hook or Hookmeister. All right. Drew is writing that down right now. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Hook. Yes, and thank you, Jocelyn, Ed, and everybody else. You guys have a great time, and Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry if Christmas, Hook. If you have any questions, have her contact me. Um, she can either contact me through my page. I'm most responsive through my page, um, but she can also contact me through my group or through my personal whatever. Um, but oh, I'm yeah, sure she know. will. She, you have <laughs> blown her mind. She, you have woke up a whole oh. new person in her. Oh, she, that's so sweet. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. Thank you, John. Take it easy, John. Easy, yes, John. bye. All right, somebody wants, somebody wants. Somebody wants. Somebody wants. Five minutes. Okay. I have my kids. <laughs> okay. That, <laughs> Family I first. Family and first. Family first. We left off, and I'll have it better under control so we can start promptly. <laughs> <laughs> How about one more question? One more question for yeah. you. On, on permissions. Where was your first permission, and how okay. do you go about getting them? Oh my gosh, um, my key to finding permissions is making bad gestures over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the ways I get permissions, um, a lot of times I'll contact people. Um, through Facebook and you know um, my dad's a pastor so I feel really comfortable reaching out to other churches like old historic churches and being like hey like can I middle my dad's a pastor so I totally get it. so I drop that line all the time <laughs> like, <laughs> just, um, but I think a lot of the times the way I get permission you know I I had a bad experience once knocking on a door um, the guy answered the door and he had like his eyes were like that red. <laughs> <laughs> he had track marks all the way down his arm. Okay. He was strung out. And I, it was just, it was a bad experience, you know? Um, so I, that was the day I stopped knocking on doors because I realized, like, this is not a good idea. Um, so from then on, I kind of, you know, if I have a site in mind or if I'm driving around, I look for people that are already outside. You know, I look for farmers that are out in the field. Um, I look for people that are getting their mail or doing yard work. And that's when I stop. And I will introduce myself and, you know, hi, I'm Jocelyn. I'm really into history. I would absolutely love an opportunity to, you know, metal detect on your property. And, 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 you know, this is the stuff that I look for. This is the stuff that I find. It's not usually anything of value. It's more the historical value. You know, I go into my whole spiel. Um, but it's normally when I'm asking for permission, it's people that are already accessible because, you know, even for me, if I'm home and I'm cooking dinner with my kids and, you know, they're screaming at each other and fighting, the last thing I want is someone knocking on my door asking for right. permission. Right. So, so I feel like if they're already outside and they're already, you know, occupied, they're, they're less likely to snap. Whereas if someone <laughs> my door and I'm like in the middle of spooning out mac and cheese and this one's fighting over that you know <laughs> and it's like what do you want <laughs> <laughs> so I really like uh, I I feel like when they're already outside that's the best opportunity to ask for permission uh, and that's kind of how I've learned to go about it so you do Even a lot of driving around doctor I'll pull over and I'll flag them down on their tractor and I'll be like, can I detect here? You know, um, that's, that's usually when I ask. <laughs> that's cool. So, you that's have cool. time for another question? From the I have room? time for probably one more question. And then okay. I got Okay, Drew, uh, Dustin O'Connor asked us a while back and I noticed some comments behind it about the question. Now, Jocelyn, if Nicola White offers you offers to let you mudlark the theme, the Thames, the Thames. With her, Thames, will you? Absolutely, I would love to go mudlarking. And actually, um, this pat my pa past trip to England when I was 
initially planning it, I had plans to go to the Thames to Mudlark. Um, and it just kind of, you know, fell apart there. I had, you know, uh, a trip to London was going to be, you know, too expensive. So I kind of skipped over London and I went straight to metal detecting holidays. Um, and, and it was an awesome experience the way it was, but originally I had actually wanted to go mudlarking. I, what is that? Mudlarking is kind of, I guess you could describe it as dump digging, but it's kind of like this weird variation. So a lot of the times people would throw their trash into the Thames and the Thames is their river system. It, it flows right through London. Um, and they would just throw their garbage and their trash into the Thames. But the Thames is tidal. So when the tide goes out, you get all this stuff that washes up, like oh. all the pipes and glassware and ah, okay. all this oh. trip, like bottles and amazing stuff. And and you can buy a, you can buy a permit through Lo you know uh, the London government. And you guys feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. This is just how I understand it. Um, but you can get a permit to go mudlarking, and it's X number of dollars or pounds, and you go out for the day while the tide is out and you can find, you know, pipes or whatever, um, bottles, pieces, fragments of pottery or even full pottery and you just spend the day, you know, and then the tide comes back in and you're done. And that's, um, mud larking, but. Um, they have a the show. Jewels, There's a TV I, show in England. <laughs> I, I've never heard of the TV show. Um, I know I follow a couple mud larkers on Instagram and actually, one of the ones that I follow, Girlfriend's Treasure, she's right in Brooklyn, which is not too far from me. Um, right, you know, right in New York City. I think it's about two hours, three hours. Um, she finds amazing stuff, and she makes jewelry out of it. So she finds like doll heads and limbs and stuff, and <laughs> and she makes jewelry and sells it in New York City, and people pay yes. like a premium for this yeah, jewelry. Mark, you know? Like, we, we, that reminds me a girl that's on prospectors radio and a dredger friend of ours kathleen biffle uh from the wandering buffaloes here on youtube uh uh -huh. she makes dredge art out of the trash she collects while dredging uh, that's kind right. of a shabby chic type stuff i like that that's neat <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. I, I've I've been thinking maybe I should start incorporating my find my junk finds into art. Like here's an aluminum can on a chain that you can wear around your neck. <laughs> you want. <laughs> you there you go. That I found. I won't tell you how I found it. So Scott Scott Lund says he. He mudlarks in on the Mississippi. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's that's awesome. I do it on the Delaware River. And Drew does it on the Delaware River. I mean, like any of these places that are people would throw garbage. A lot of the times when I'm at a site and I'm looking for a dump, it's like you know they would throw it downhill. So like over a hill and down, and that's where you find the dump. Um, huh. And this is, I guess the thing could be safe said for rivers. I mean, you threw it over the bank and it was gone. It was washed away. Um, great. Well, I'm gonna have to check that out. That sounds like yeah, a book. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, I we wow, time flies. Thank I you, know. Jocelyn, for being on. I we would love oh, to have you so guys back yeah. again. And if you want, you could even let Drew in a little more since he's <laughs> trying to pop in. But. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully I, I hope we run and into Rush. yeah, Fossick and Gold Rush. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all yeah. be there. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dano's Dano's roasting a hog on, at Fossick. No, I'm uh, talking about I was talking about having Drew in the picture. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> so, yeah, there. See. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there'll be a home roast at the Falsic. Well, we That's appreciate amazing. we oh, appreciate you cool. coming on, and on the thirteenth of February, Aqua Jigger will be here. I hope you call in for that. Uh -huh. I well, reached out to Michael Bennett, you know Nugget Noggin. Uh, if you wouldn't mind 
uh, saying a good word for us here at Flash in, yeah, Flash in Your Pan, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I'll try to do that for you. Michael's a little <laughs> bit more withdrawn than less accessible than the rest of us, but um, I will do my best to put in a good word. <laughs> he, I, I follow him quite a bit. I, I like how he mixes things up, but I know he's busy like all of you, but you and Bo have been amazing, and I appreciate it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Drew, I, uh, you agree. We, we, like, <laughs> we like Drew, too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there you go. <laughs> well, we'll let you go so you could go call your children and have your ch children time. I know how valuable that is, especially I'm we're empty nesters now at our house. My kids are in Washington and one's in Massachusetts, so I don't hear from them as much as I'd like to. But, Enjoy it while you can. They grow fast. Yes. Oh, definitely. I'm trying. <laughs> I My son is college, and it's the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you it's again great. very much, Jocelyn, <laughs> Drew. I your, your show. This has been awesome. We'll do it uh, again sometime soon, and I'll be better about being on time. <laughs> Start early next time. We we can always do a dry <laughs> run. A, <laughs> we can always do a dry run the day before or something, so everything's tuned in yeah. for you. I have to remember which Skype address I'm actually on. So we're gonna... <laughs> also, it was, okay, that was at your end. <laughs> yeah, it was just bad. Oh. Uh, we, we have an ongoing joke here at Fa Flash in Your Pan about Murphy. Mm -hmm. uh, Murphy's Law, what can go wrong, will go wrong. Yep. He might as well be living in my cabinet. He shows up all the time. <laughs> huh, Murphy? Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joshua, thanks again. Thanks for showing up. It was yeah, been fun. Uh, I hope to see you again. I mean, you know. I mean, I hope you come on our show again. We'll see you again, I'm sure, doing your videos. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just you want us on the show again, just send us a message. And maybe I'll get Drew to be lost of a creeper and actually be in the shot, which would be awesome. So no, Yeah, he was no. doing a good job of being the creeper tonight. He, he likes being the creeper, I think. He wants to <laughs> <laughs> pop his head in every once in a while. And then disappear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. And no, thank I'll you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, that was great. She was. She was a great guest. Yep. That Absolutely. was fun. Boy, time flies way too fast. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, sometimes there could have been a million more questions and stuff. There was there was a ton of questions we didn't get to that you know people were asking. Oh yeah, and you know I'm kind of busy on my end, so right. I know well, I you know it, it was. Sometimes I go by so fast, you gotta stop, and scroll back down, trying to find it. Yeah, and, and uh, I I have chat on slow mode too. Just right, think I if know. I didn't have it on slow mode. And I I think some of it too. Some of the people didn't realize that she wasn't actually <laughs> watching. Right, right. You know, right. She didn't uh, see the chat. Yeah, right. I uh, hopefully next time she'll be able to ha be able to view the chat and see them all. So, uh, Thomas folks, our good <laughs> friend Thomas, Lucky Ducky Dog, Thomas folks. He's like, Ed, you've done dry runs, and Murphy still shows up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, knows you. The truth. Hey, that's the truth. <laughs> And Jaren's probably right. It could be me. I am a partial blonde. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then the other part's blonde. Hey, I do have some <laughs> strawberry in there. I do have some ginger. <laughs> oh, man. I, I had a really good time tonight with our guests. It was yeah. fun having her on. Um, 
I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas out there. We'll see you before New Year's. Catch us on the 26th next week, same time, same channel. Uh, and we'll probably have Joseph from Green Mountain Gold Trap with us for a oh. bit. Instead of, you know, just the crew and uh, open mic night for anyone who wants to call in and say something. Um, but on the 9th of Jan January, we have Jovan Hutton Pulitzer of History Heretic and Treasure Force. He's been on History Channel and Curse of Oak Island. And that should be a really good show. I'm really looking forward to that show. Um, well, I hope I hope uh, Joshua had a good time tonight. I hope she enjoyed being on the show. Oh uh, yeah, I hear you there. Yeah, I mean, it seems like she had a good time. I've been trying to uh, keep her going there. You know. Well, I think it did a pretty good job considering. You know, um, a lot of questions going on in the room, right, at least right. the ones we did catch. Sorry for everyone who asked questions. I didn't get them answered. Uh, but we will get her on again, that I assure you. And I hope you uh, join us then. And we'll yeah, catch I... you later, too, Mr. Chadwick. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for all the new viewers that came and joined us today yeah all tonight. new viewers and i hope you subscribed and become part of the flashing your pan community uh, i think we're a pretty good group of guys here on tuesday night uh, we're having fun uh there's a metal detecting show put on by andy o'neill O'Neill on his Facebook page. It's live every Thursday Tuesday. night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, this coming week or Thursday, he'll be having Digger Dawn from the UK. John Chip Chasey. Chase, Chip Chase, Don Chip Chase. She's pretty cool. Uh, she, you'll have to check out her videos. I'm actually talking to her also about being on our show in the future. So, um, Andy seems like he has a pretty good show. So go over, show him some love if you haven't already uh, on Facebook. And um, anything else? No, nope, not there. for me. I'm good. I just Merry Christmas to everybody. And, yeah, just Merry uh, Christmas to everybody. Pre appreciate you showing up for tonight's show. We had 60 likes tonight. That's pretty good. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. I, no, I, no, I, no, no dislikes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. And we also had a record number of people participating or viewing cool. uh, for this show is excellent um good night everybody thank you all for joining us here and again have a very merry christmas and i'm i'll wait for the new year's for the next show and until then may you always have a flash in your pan yeah you know what he says that's right maybe one day too we'll see you on the river. Good night, Thank everybody. Good, Good night, night, folks. Good night, Dano. Good night, Ed boy. Good night, Good night Jesse. Jesse. Good, Good night, night Dano. Angela, Good Patrick, night, Karen, Scott. Yeah, Patrick, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Have a good one. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> oh. We hope to see you next week. Say yeah. that. Yes, sir.
shit.